Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Another Fat Guy Cooks. I'm your fat guy, Andy Baker, and today we are going to be having a go at doing some basic bitch sushi. Another lost day, another lost year, another chopped onion to cover up the tears. Another dream dead, another loss on the books. Another fat guy cooks. Okay, so we're going to be making sushi today, but not sushi as you would probably experience in Japan. Definitely not what you would experience in Japan. Probably not even what you would experience in a landlocked city thousands of miles away from the sea. Um, what we're going to be making is sushi that you can make at home, nice and easy, with stuff that you can buy from your local supermarket without any stress. We're not going to be using any fish products that you have to worry about poisoning yourself with or getting parasites or whatever the fuck it is that you get from that shit. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, we're going to be keeping it simple. Um, but it'll look good. It'll taste good. It'll impress somebody who's stupid, um, which is all I'm really trying to do here. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get on with it. Right. The first thing we're going to do and the most important thing about making your own sushi is the rice. It's a bit of a bitch to get right. I think I've figured it out. Follow along with me. If this is completely fucking wrong and you know a better way of doing it, then do it that way. Don't do it my way. My way might be stupid. But this is the way that I've managed to get it to work a couple of times, so this is how I'm gonna do it. So, big pot. You gotta make sure you're using sticky sushi rice. I've got a big pot of it here. The general rule for amounts of rice and water is double the amount of water as you have rice, plus a little bit. So I think this equates to about two cups, but we'll measure it out and see. One cup. Two cups. Okay, so that's like two and a bit cups. So then we're gonna get one cup of water, two cups of water, a bit of water, and then a bit more. So like two and a half cups of water. I have just realised that I have completely missed out the first step entirely and I'm trying to figure out a way to backtrack. It's easy. I never did anything wrong. I meant to do this from the start. Turn your heat off. Throw in a load more water. so that it's like warmish. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave our rice in there to soak for about 20 minutes, half an hour. That's gonna get a little bit of the water into the rice. That's gonna help it cook easier. And we also need to clean our rice as well, which is getting all the starch off it, which means we basically have to run it through water a few times until the water comes out clear. Then we can do exactly what I just started to do just then. While our rice is um, soaking and cleaning, we're just going to do some light preparation, get a few bits ready for when the, uh, the rice is ready. Next thing I'm going to do is just make some spicy tuna to stick in our sushi rolls. I'm going to make like a California rolly type thing. Tuna steak. Yes, you can use fresh tuna, but we're not using fresh tuna, we're using canned tuna because we're making basic bitch sushi. For our spiced tuna rolls, we have some tuna, we have some mayonnaise, yeah, not that much. Usually what you would use is 
Sriracha. 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 Usually you'd use Sriracha. If you use spicy tuna. I don't have any Sriracha, but I do have Gochujang, which is the Korean chili paste, which is amazing. So I'm going to get a big spoonful of this. I'll do. And I'm just going to mix this guy together. And then we're just going to cling film this bitch. Put it to one side, stick it in the fridge, and then that'll be ready when we do our sushi. So, we're going to grab our sieve and we're going to strain our uncooked rice that's just soaked. simmer or get to a simmer when it does you want to start keeping an eye on it we're looking to get to the point where the water is almost completely soaked up and evaporated into the rice so half of it will probably evaporate half will soak into the rice we're looking to get the rice to about al dente so which is just short of being cooked so there's a little bit of bite left to it so it's not fully soft when it gets to that point we're going to put a lid on top of the pot turn the heat off and then we're just going to leave it for like an hour or two and then it should finish cooking inside the pot and it should also then start cooling down as well quick thing really quick that i forgot that i need to do <clears throat> just as it's finished cooking before you, when you put the lid on it um did i turn that on yeah okay put the lid on it let it go for ages we're gonna get some uh, rice vinegar Throw a big sploosh of that in a cup. I'm gonna get a big pinch of salt, maybe two, like that, and some sugar. Good whack of sugar. I'm gonna mix all that up. Lovely. And then we're going to throw that into our rice mixture, give it a stir, incorporate it all the way through. I just started watching Terminator Salvation because I hate myself. 
stir it all the way through while it's still really hot. Put your lid back on and then let it go. Perfect, it's going to cool down now. I'll see you in a bit. A few hours later, we now have our big bowl of flavoured rice, which has got our sugar and our salt mixture in there. Um, and the rice wine, not rice wine, the rice vinegar, which really makes the rice taste good. Fully cooked now. So we have our rolling mat, which I've covered in um, cling film. What that does is it stops all the little rice, rice grains from getting in between the, um, the little strands of the rolling mat. It's a massive pain in the arse to clean. So this just makes your life a lot easier if you wrap it. Finger bowl with warm water in it. Rinsing your fingers every time in your hands before you touch the rice, and that'll stop the rice sticking to your hands, make your life a lot easier. We need our nori, which is our uh, sheets of uh, seaweed, which is what we wrap our stuff up in, or crab sticks, and our cucumber. So, we're just going to use our half sheets of nori to start. Uh, yeah, of nori to start with. Now these types of sushi are called this. I can't remember what, but this. So, start off with, we're going to rinse our fingers and hands. Get them nice and covered in warm water. Grab an amount of rice, about golf ball size, and very lightly Start spreading it across. You don't want to press your rice down, you just want to lightly spread it. If you feel like the rice is starting to stick to your fingers, then give them another little rinse in warm water. Start again. You want to leave one side slightly clear here, so you don't want to go all the way to the back. And leave a little bit of room. But you want to come pretty much all the way up to the front. You want to make sure you're going all the way to your edges, but not over them if you can avoid it. Now, a lot of people do this a lot quicker than me, a lot of people do this a lot better than me. I am still a beginner, so. I'm always happy to take advice if you know of a better way of doing this or something that I'm doing horribly, terribly wrong, please feel free to comment down below and let me know. Okay, that looks about right to me. So we're going to break out our crab sticks. these up and see how they fill so we get two about two and a third so I'm gonna pop a crab stick down there crab stick down there that should be about right to the end look at that and then we're gonna open up our cucumber from earlier Put those alongside, they should fit pretty well. There we go. Okay, so you should be able to see that near the camera. Really, any of my friends out there will know that I can't roll joints for shit. They always come out terrible, or cigarettes, or anything. So, I'm gonna do my best. It may go absolutely horribly wrong. I'm not gonna cut anything out if it does. We'll see. So, I'm gonna tuck this in. Fold you over and then pressing all the way. Finish off the roll. And we should have something that looks vaguely like a sushi roll. So we're going to 
take that off here, pop him down there, put our mat to one side, we wet our fingers, probably get some sort of plate, put these things on. Okay, so we're going to dip our knife in the warm water, and we're going to take the first cut, it's going to be straight down the centre, and it should be nice and sharp and nice and easy. Once you've done your centre cut, put your two ends that you've just cut next to each other, like so. Good to see that. And then decide how big you want your sushi pieces to be. I think something about that should be fine. And then always cut with confidence. You might end up with a little bit on the end left over that's a bit ugly. It's not the end of the world, because you can just eat those as you go. And now we have six reasonably good looking pieces of sushi. with a good size facing you. There we go. And just on their own, the remainder, but we'll sort out um, soy sauce and wasabi in a minute. So I'll put this one side. And this time we're going to put the, uh, the nori down before we put the, uh, the rolling mat down. And now we're going to cover this Right. So, wet your hands again. Need a bit more this time. And start spreading. And again, you want to leave a lip on one side. Okay. And then, we get some sesame seeds. Just give them a light sprinkling of sesame seeds. And some black sesame seeds. Just for a bit of colour. Like so. Now once you've done this, it's very lightly packed down. Get your rolling mat. Put your rolling mat in line with the side that you've gone all the way to the edge. Okay. Once you've done that, get your knife. You want to go underneath the edge and then you're just going to turn it over. And again, move with confidence. Do everything you do with confidence and you'll be fine. If you start finicky, getting picky, dicking around, then you start fucking things up. So, we're going to get our spicy tuna and do ourselves a nice little line. Maybe a little bit more. Don't want to go too crazy because these things can end up being really big. Standby. And then we're going to go avocado, try and use the uh, least brown pieces. Make sure we get the lip 
around and get everything in and under nice and tight. And then we just follow it around, follow it over, keep rolling. And then we're going to end up with this. It looks pretty sexy. So once we've got that guy, we're going to get a cling wrap. And we're going to get a piece just big enough to go around it. First, before I forget, we're going to grab our smoked salmon. Now, I've not done this one before, so this could go horribly wrong. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to take our smoked salmon. Try and get a nice good sheet of it, like so. And then we're just gonna lay that over the top. Get another piece, try and match it up nicely. And just lay that over the top too. Fold it round, lovely. Get our cling wrap, that we've just cut. Starting on the salmon side. Place it over and then roll this whole thing up in the salmon and in the cling wrap and everything. Tuck your sides in, tuck them in, okay, and then pop it on your chopping board. And then it's exactly the same thing again. We just cut down the middle, make sure your knife again is a little bit damp and a little bit warm. And again, nice, confident motions go center. Hopefully you can see this without my hand in the way. Should probably go the other side. There we go. So go center. Go. And nice, confident, all the way through. Again, turn them around. Choose your size. You get a little bit of salmon poking out, uh, spice tuna poking out, just tuck him back in. Again, a little bit of a rinse. Keep your knife clean, always. Like so. And last one. And then just unwrap and plate up. Now, there's plenty of people better at decorating shit than me making food look sexy but I don't think that looks too bad. That looks too bad. Cool so just to finish this off we want to get a little uh, dish or just something to serve our soy sauce in like so. A lot of people like using low sodium soy sauce. I'm not one of those people. Try and open your wasabi without eating the metal covering. There we go. Grab some chopsticks. From the new little chopstick pack that you would have been sold. Because you're fancy. And as 
see. Not a bad little plate of sushi. Almost looks like you know what you're doing. So let's try it. So we're gonna grab a little bit of the wasabi, mix it in with our soy sauce. guys um another fat guy's just cooked make sushi for your friends family they'll think you're a badass unless you make it for somebody who really knows what they're doing and then they'll probably think you suck but fuck those people um please like comment and subscribe um all the comments and likes and subscriptions and shit just you know get me closer and closer to being able to get paid for this and do it for a job instead of <coughs> doing it for fun so yeah, have a great time, have a great fucking quarantine, have a great rest of your lives, love you all, bye. Oh yeah, this is what my hair looks like before after I... What do you think? See you later.